Will Arnett as Lego Batman. It's a cliche at this point to say that the Lego movie was way better than anyone expected it to be. Or at least anyone who wasn't closely monitoring Lord and Miller's career expected it to be. And one of the many elements that worked so well was Arnett as Batman. Emmett, this is my boyfriend, Batman. I'm Batman. That's your boyfriend? What could possibly be worse than finding out not only that the girl you're interested in has a boyfriend, but her boyfriend is freaking Batman! The coolest rebel you know! He's so serious and brooding. He's way too cool. She can never be interested in you. You guys gotta check out these new subwoofers I installed in the back. I call them the dogs. Listen to them bark! <laughs> Fortunately for Emmett, this Batman turns out to be kind of a douchebag. Not an aggressively abusive douchebag, but a little bit of a douchebag. A charming, hilarious douchebag, but, like, not nearly as cool as he thinks he is. Pow. Wham. Kazap. First try. Lego Batman is an arrogant, self-centered, angsty teenager. It's a perfect execution of this movie's childlike view of the world. If anybody has black parts, I need them, okay? I only work in black. And sometimes very, very dark gray. This Batman is exactly what a little kid thinks is dark and cool and grown up. By, you know, exaggerating the elements that some actual Batman fans think make Batman dark and cool, but they're really just masks for loneliness, depression, and a fear of making connections. Babe, look, if this relationship is ever gonna work between us, I need to feel free to party with a bunch of strangers whenever I feel like it. What? Then when Lucy and Batman go their separate ways, Batman bounces back with his own spin-off movie where he's happy to be alone. Or at least he thinks he is. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> In the marketing for this movie, the tagline used that always be yourself unless you can be Batman meme, indicating that this movie would show just how cool it is to be Batman. And then the movie itself showed just how much it actually sucks to be Batman. Thank me later, but I just happen to be in the hood, and I figure that you can probably use the... <laughs> ...company. Sure, he's rich, but he's a lonely loser whose super friends don't actually like him, and who keeps everyone at a bad arm's length due to a fear of forming a new family because he's afraid if he forms a new family, he'll just end up losing them again. What a depressing life. Oh, not 20 minutes. Stupid. Wow! If I had a nickel for every time- An animated universe featured Will Arnett as a depressed famous millionaire and Alison Brie as a kid using buzzwords to play grown-up. I like business. Uh, transactions? Is this business business? Numbers? I'd have two nickels! Of course everything changes when Will Arnett accidentally adopts his TV nephew, who is really playing against type here. Hey orphans, look who's here! <laughs> have you ever heard Michael Sarah sound so unnervous? Like, it really sounds like he's smiling through the entire record. I can't even picture him holding a smile that long. Wow, stairs. Weird. Actually, the story of the Lego Batman movie bears a lot of resemblance to the story of Holy Musical Batman. They both involve Batman adopting Robin and learning to overcome his stunted emotions and fear of making new connections by embracing friendship and a new family with more than a little guidance from Alfred, while the rogues gallery is restructuring as they reassess their strategy for how they take him down. I wanna be your friend forever. I wanna play Nintendo. Who needs Nintendo when you got a friend? Go! And beyond the structural similarities, there are a couple of very similar jokes in both parodies. My name's Richard Grayson, but all the kids in the orphanage call me Dick. Well, children can be cruel. Yeah. They call me... Dick. Does that hurt your feelings? No. Because it's my name. Wait, does Batman live in Bruce Wayne's basement? No. Bruce Wayne lives in Batman's attic. Batman, what it is. Oh, wow. Where are we headed? Uh, Wayne Manor. Huh. 
I wonder if Bruce Wayne knows that Batman lives under his house. Just to be clear, I am not accusing the Lego Batman filmmakers of plagiarism or anything. This is probably parallel thinking. If you were going to brainstorm a bunch of Batman jokes, you would probably come up with some very similar ones to these. And there are plenty of other ways that this movie was ahead of the curve. This was the first movie to cast Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, and it was the first to associate Joker with a Hangover alum. Probably worth the Google. But, you know, this one had the Hangover alum who's not too much of a coward to still make funny movies. Blink, blink, blink. Blinkity, blink, blink, blink. This movie also came before both the aforementioned Harley Quinn animated series and the live-action Birds of Prey movie, both of which are brilliant comedies about Harley getting over her toxic relationship with the Joker. So it's kind of funny seeing how this universe's Harley and Joker actually seem to have a healthy and supportive relationship. Joker, do you read me? 10 4, girl buddy. We're ready for you, sugar plum. Well then, let's raise the roof. If anyone's getting over a toxic ex in this movie, it is the Joker, and that ex is Batman. See? Superman gets it. Why can't Batman? Boo boo, look at me. You're too good for Batman. He needs to open his eyes and see what it feels like when you're not around, okay? Well, okay, I guess the other non-Harley villains are getting over their toxic relationship with the Joker. It's complicated, but you know, there's only so much you can do in a kid-friendly version of the story. Joker may be done with us, but we're not done with him. We will be the Joker's reckoning! And Batman is the one who has to learn to be a better person and heal his relationships with his friends and his foes. It's basically the kid-friendly comedic tale of how the cool, rich, lonely loser opens up and becomes the Bat-Dad of the Bat family. It's the transition between the two extremes of the Batman mythos, and it's played brilliantly. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I hate you, Joker. <gasps> I hate you too. I hate you more. I hate you the most. I hate you forever. I think the Lego Batman movie is the ultimate Batman parody. It deconstructs everything ridiculous about the Batman lore, it picks apart everything that can suck about the character of Batman, at least when he's written poorly, and then it bounces right back and celebrates everything that can make Batman fun. Ah, uh, come on, Commission, let's face it. Those guys are no match for the four of us. We'll give them a 30 minute head start. And Will Arnett apparently enjoyed this role so much that he not only attached himself to another Lego project, he attached himself to another animated DC spoof. Will Arnett, the patron saint of DC comedy, apparently. 